Hey everybody, welcome back. This is applying assert equal to in the testing section of module two. So this may be one of the harder parts of the prep course and it's because we're going to uh, test something that's called every. It's a rebuilt function and it's an example of a higher order function. And so I'm going to read this directly, meaning that it takes as a parameter another function. Higher order functions can also return functions and as values. This function takes two parameters. The first will be an array of scalar values. The second parameter will be a callback function. When you're creating a test suite to verify that every works, you're going to need a function that we, you will use as an argument when you call every. So let's go over to MDN, MDN every. That should usually get us there. Okay, cool. So this is the function that we're rebuilding. The every method tests whether all elements in the array pass the test implemented by the provided function. It returns a Boolean value. So there's an example. So we got an array of values and we have a function that's going to check a given value and make sure that it is below 40, it looks like in this case. So we run this, gives us true because all of these values are less than 40. So let's say that we changed one of them can you actually change one? Oh, how cool. You know, 49. So if we run this, this one should be false. So it is. So essentially, we need a function that's going to iterate over this array and then apply a function to every value in here. It's also then going to need to keep track of if any of them ever return false. And if they do, it's going to need to return false. Otherwise, it's going to return true. So a couple more things. You might want to read some of these things, go into the uh, examples. The difference between this is that instead of it being something like this, every with is big enough, it's going to be every without dot, it'll just be every by itself. And then this will be the first argument. So let's actually just look at that real quick. There's a console, oh geez, what are you, what are you guys doing here? Clear the console. I can't actually make that any bigger. So, well that's okay, we'll just put it in here. So instead of like this, it's gonna look like this. So every, just a function, it's going to have two arguments. One's going to be an array and one's going to be a function. And it's like, this will be the first time that you've seen this. And this is where JavaScript starts, starts to get, um, well, kind of wild as it were, because this can be a function and it actually is. And by writing just the name, we're going to input the definition of the function as an argument. So it, it might seem a little weird at this point, and I, it's okay if you don't completely get what we go over in this lesson. Higher order functions are not going to be part of the interview. However, it's never a bad time to start looking at these things. So let's go back to our code. Okay, so we want to return a Boolean value, blah, 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 blah. All right, cool. And this is a link to where we just were. So let's go ahead and we have a function definition for every. So they kind of got us started here. So we'll go and we'll highlight all of this, paste in our new function, clear. Okay, so here's our every function. We start, we create a variable called does every element match, and we set it equal to true. And here are those two parameters, array and callback function. And then for variable i is equal to zero, i is less, okay, so just a regular for loop. We're going to assign to does every element match the result of the callback function on every element. Then at the end, we're going to return does every element match. So our assertion function to be used, because the result of this every function is going to be true or false, we're going to need assert equal again. So you should not do this because it says, please do not simply paste in code from before. However, since these videos are already taking probably more time than they should, I'm going to come back here and just copy and paste this. Do what I say, not what I do. Anyway, so we'll come back here to the assertion function. And so now we have an assertion function, assert equal, which will work for us. So let's go over to these and see if we can't figure out a way to uh, use some of what they're on about here. Okay, so function is below threshold. That's a, that's a pretty good function. Uh, it's a little, little bit more uh, complicated than I would like, um, which is to say, why threshold, why current value, why not 10, and why not val? So what I mean by that, of course, is one of the things that I'm gonna need is this callback function. So I'll define it down here. Let's just copy and paste this bad boy. And the array, actually, why not? Go, we'll grab these paste them in, uh, is below threshold, 
Mm, let's make that less than 10. Current value. Mm, let's say val. And got to be less than 10. So we'll want two test cases for this. We're going to say one for array true and one for array false. And for true, we want all of these values to be less than 10. So let's go ahead and make all of the values less than 10. And we'll make one where all of them are not less than 10. Okay, it's variable array true. So we'll say expected well, we don't really need an expected value because it's just going to be true or false. So we'll leave that out for now. But we're going to call assert equal with array true. And that's the actual result. Wait, 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 array true. Oh, no, we're not, at, we're not at that yet. Okay, let's get rid of this. So we have array true and array false, and those are going to be kind of separate. So we actually need to call our every function. So we'll say variable actual true. I'm going to say actual true because in a moment we're going to say actual false. And the idea is that we want the actual result of our call to every to be true and then later to be false. So actual true is going to be a call to every. Every is going to take an array, which will be array true, and a function, which is going to be less than 10. Now we don't actually call the function here. We just write the definition. So actual true is equal to every array true less than 10. And Expected true is just the same as true, so here's what we're going to call our assert equal function. The actual value is actual true. The expected value is true. And the test name is should return true when all values return true. And of course, what we're saying there is that when we apply this less than 10 function to every value here, every one of them should return true. And that's basically the definition of every, it's saying, hey, is every value in here returning true when we apply this function to them? So should return true when all, uh, we'll say array values, return true when tested. Hopefully that will help make things a little bit clear. And then we have an actual false. So actual false is going to be every called on actual, uh, no, called on array false. And again, our function less than 10. We got assert equal on line 32. So we're going to call assert equal with actual false, should be false, and then say should return false when all array values, when not all array values return true when tested. And so it's not they all need to return false, it's that if one of them returns false, the whole thing returns false because we cannot say that every element passes the test. We, we must say the opposite. So does every element pass the test? In this case, it should be true. In this case, it should be false. So what we've done is we've now set up a test case that it, we're going to be able to apply to our function every, and this will tell us whether or not every is working correctly. Now, spoiler alert, every is not working correctly. So this is going to be the most important part of this problem is setting up these test cases. Setting them up accurately and setting them up in a way that proves that every works the way that it should is something that's very important. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to switch something around real quick. Instead of this value, the second value being the one that's in trouble, which is to say which is going to return false because 13 is not less than 10, let's go ahead and change that. We'll make this one 17. So it's the last value in here that's going to return false. So I'm going to hit run, and I'm going to get passed for both. Now you might think, okay, cool, my every function works. The problem is, is that, well, the problem is that it doesn't. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to try something else. We're going to move this value that does not pass the test to the second value here, rather than the last value in the array. And if we run this one, we're going to notice that it does not work. So if it ever doesn't work, the function under test is not accurate. It is not working correctly. But we did give ourselves a little bit of a, an idea of what things might be, what, what might be going wrong. Because if the last value is the one that returns false, we were okay. Since it's the second one and there were values after it that returned true, 
we are not okay. So failed should return false when, so yeah, expected false but got true, cool. So if we come back up here, what's happening is that we are, for every element in the input array, applying our callback function and reassigning does every element match to be whatever the result of that is. Now the problem is that in this case, well, let's actually go a little bit in depth, more in depth. I'm gonna comment out this by highlighting everything in command forward slash, and then I'm gonna come up to uh, line six, and I'm going to console.log does every element match. And I'm also going to highlight it, add a colon and a comma, paste it again, and then we're gonna put this, well, we're gonna put all of this in quotes. Now what this is gonna do is gonna give us a nice little identifier in the console. So if we run this one, does every element match is equal to true? And that makes sense for the first one, right? One is less than 10. The second one is 13 and it returns false. So at that point, does every element match is equal to false? And if does every element match is ever equal to false, we know that every has to return false because every tells us if every element match matches. If we ever find out that all the elements don't match, then we know by definition that every ought to return false. So, and it doesn't, right? It changes it back to true when we get to the next one, nine, which is, and, and so we've kind of lost that information. So let's hop in here and we say, if does every is ever false, we want to do a couple things, right? We want to um, basically keep it. So something like uh, don't keep iterating and probably return right at that point. So a couple of ways that we can do this. These are more just notes rather than pseudocode. So let's think about what we would actually do. If does every element matches ever equal to false, we could just return it directly. That's gonna break the for loop. But another thing is that we could actually use the break keyword, which breaks the for loop itself. So two ways to do that. Let's just say return does every element match. So sweet. If we'll grab our does every element match, we'll paste it in there, is equal to false. That means that we applied our callback function to an element in the input array and we got false at some point because this line is doing that. So if the next time through we check and does every element match was set equal to false on the previous iteration, then what we're going to need to do is return that directly. That'll stop the for loop, that'll stop the function, and that should have us in good shape. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this console.log. We will get rid of this line of pseudocode We'll say return directly and okay. So that should be good because we've now identified the error which was when it gets set to false, we don't wanna set it back equal to true. So now if that ever does happen, we're checking that first. It's not gonna work on the first time because the first time we set it, does every element equal to true, does every element match equal to true by default. At this point, we check to see if it's ever equal to false. If it is, we're gonna return it directly. So if we run this one, we should be passing our second test. Now here's one of the more important things. Well, they're all kind of important things at this point, but we need to make sure that we didn't do something that messes up the first test. So we'll uncomment out our test where we're checking to see if it works when everything is true, and we'll run that one as well. It is certainly possible to write more of these tests to you know, apply categorical reasoning, which is to say maybe we wanna to check to see if does it work if the first one, does it work maybe if the last one is, we did the last one already and we found out that it does work at that point, so <clears throat> let's, well, let's not mess with that over much, but that is one of the things that you can practice on and think about a problem in a slightly different way, which is to say that we are thinking about it with the end result in mind first, as opposed to trying to figure out how to get the end result. We do a bunch of things based on what we think the end result is going to be and then test that using this test case and our test functions and then use that to directly edit the function that we created in the first place. It's just a different way to think about things. So now that we've got all of that, I'm going to return to do the superfluous last portion of our problem, which is, I'm not sure why this says submitted. It's probably because I did it previously or something, but don't worry about that. Copy all of this, or highlight all of it, and paste in the code that we wrote. 
So there's our assertion function, there's our new definition of every, there are a couple test cases, and all it's gonna do is pretty much be like, hey, good work, you have an assert equal function. So excellent work on this, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.